going on guys i'm steve welcome back to the channel welcome back to another video if it's your first time stopping by the channel hit that subscribe button trust me you won't regret it if you're a returning subscriber as always guys welcome back and i do appreciate the support guys listen yesterday in uh birmingham alabama shout out birmingham six of the eight uh people that were charged with the kidnap and murder and uh among other things of mahogany jackson had appeared in court for their prelim you know preliminary trial or whatever these people are giovanni clapp which i don't know if it's a man or a woman francis harris male Tasia lewis female jeremiah mcdowell male brandon pope male and ariana robinson female so we got three positive dudes I don't know if Giovanni's a, a, a male or a female. And you got Tasia and Ariana Robinson. Tasia Lewis, I'm sorry. Now, details have come out. And uh, they are disturbing. I'm going to play you two video clips because one video clip has, you know, one news story has more details that the other one didn't have. And the other one that I'm about to show you gave the motive. Now, speaking of the motive, a lot of people are saying a lot of different things. You're hearing people saying, hey, they was fighting over food stamps. Hey, the mom, uh, you know, started the fight and it's the mom's fault. All this different stuff from a lot of different people that weren't on the scene. So I'm going to take, you know, what was said in court as the possible motive of what they're saying the motive was. So. One thing for sure, something was stolen from this girl that set her off to where she started coming at a lot of people. And this unfortunate event happened to her. Take a look at this first video and then we'll come back and uh, go into the next one. Take a look. Six of the eight defendants in the murder and kidnapping of 20-year-old Mahogany Jackson appeared in court today in Birmingham for a preliminary hearing. Prosecutors displayed still images from videos taken while Jackson was held against her will. ABC 3340's Gracie Johnson was in the courtroom today, and Gracie, some of the defendants' charges were reduced and even dropped. Muriel, based on testimony and evidence that was presented during the preliminary hearing, Judge William Bell found probable cause for the defendants to be bound over for grand jury consideration. But like you said, some of the charges were reduced. Brandon Pope, Jeremiah McDowell, Francis Harris, Tasia Lewis, Giovanni Clapp, and Ariana Robinson were all in court Wednesday for the preliminary hearing. The prosecution presented graphic screenshots from videos. All of these were taken while Mahogany Jackson was held against her will before she was murdered. The photos depicted Mahogany being slapped, punched, stripped nude, and forced to perform sexual acts while held at gunpoint. Jefferson County District Attorney Danny Carr discussed the nature of the videos. Sheer brutality, uh, you know, the, the barbaric nature of it, um, you can't substitute that by just the photos. There are eight videos total initially brought forward to law enforcement by an acquaintance who was able to provide copies of some of the videos and direct investigators to Jackson's body. Investigators discovered three additional videos late Tuesday night. All eight of the defendants are seen in a portion of at least one of the videos. Pope, McDowell, and Harris were initially charged with two counts each of capital murder. Pope and McDowell's capital murder charge on the basis of rape and sodomy were dropped. Harris's two counts of capital murder both carried over. Lewis and Clapp were each charged with single felony murder charges and assault in the second degree. Clapp's assault charge was reduced to third degree assault, which is a misdemeanor. Lewis's assault charge was bound over. Robinson was present in court today, yet her felony murder charge was bound over by another judge. Now, while some of the charges today were dropped or reduced, Judge Bell said that it's clear that he made it clear that these charges can be brought back at any time by a grand jury. Live in Birmingham, Gracie Johnson. All right, guys, that's uh, the first video about this subject and uh, what this young lady went through. Nobody should go through. Let's get that out the way right now. You know what I'm saying? They slapped this girl, punched her, spit on her, 
did all kind of heinous stuff to her. You know what I'm saying? And uh, it's a lot of stuff going around about why this happened. And, uh, you know, who allegedly pulled the trigger on this uh, young lady? This next video will explain a lot of that. But before I go into this video, you know, I know a lot of families are involved. A lot of people are hurt. And um, we really got to call this for what it is, man. For real. This is ninja shit at its finest. The more you go into this case and look at this whole situation, the more everybody got to share blame. Should she had a went through that? Hell no. But there are different avenues in which to solve conflicts. And for the sake of everybody, I think it could have been handled differently. But then again, these are young minds. And they handle things the way they handle them, which is a problem nowadays out here. Take a look at this next video and then we'll come back and finish this thing up. Tonight, new details in the death of Mahogany Jackson, six of the eight suspects in court today. Thank you so much for joining us here at six. I'm Brittany Decker. I'm Guy Rawlings. We've been following the Mahogany Jackson case. Uh, WVTM 13's Aaron Llewellyn live and local in Birmingham tonight outside the Jefferson County Courthouse. A lot of the details too gruesome to talk about, Aaron. Yeah, Guy, Brittany, the hearing today lasted for about three hours and the legal teams went through the details of what led up to Mah Mahogany Jackson's death and even uncovered some new details about her final moments. And some of it was too unbearable for her family to hear. Now, today we know that the defense attorneys claim that Jackson was at one of the suspects house, Brandon Pope, and questioned him about a gun that she says was stolen and money that was also stolen from her, po her purse at some point through uh, out the, the day. She even made him strip to prove he didn't have it. Now Pope told, Pope told Harris to do something to her because she made him strip. Now the detectives working the case say uh, Jackson was assaulted multiple times throughout the time she was being held against her will. Now both Jackson and some of the suspect's families were in the courtroom today for the detailed hearing, some of it becoming emotional. Now District Attorney Danny Carr says her family might be disappointed some of the charges were reduced or thrown out, but they are one step closer to justice. They understand the circumstances, but they also appreciate uh, what we have in front of us. And um, they understand that this is a marathon and not a sprint. Um, there's still a lot of work ahead of us. And, um, you know, we'll be there with them every step of the way and make sure that there's accountability. Now, later in the day before Jackson died, she was put in Harris's car and he, Pope and McDowell took her to clean Harris's car out. Even though the defense claims Harris said they were taking her back to her house. That's when Harris is accused of pulling the trigger and shooting Jackson in the back of the head. Now, District Attorney Danny Carr calls this one of the most gruesome murders he's ever seen. Since I've been in his office, I've had some, yes. Um, um, the, some of y'all may be, well, I was young too at the time, but the um, Thanksgiving homicide at the Airport Inn Hotel where three people were brutally murdered in the Airport Inn Hotel on Thanksgiving morning. I actually handled that case and tried it myself. That was a very brutal case. Um, this one, unlike that one, the brutality kind of played itself out in real time because it's video. there's a video involved. Now this case is still being investigated, so new details could emerge in the coming days. And the things that are still being investigated are rape kits and ballistic results. Now the two other suspects in this case are expected to be back in court for the same hearing on Monday. For now, we're live in Birmingham. Aaron Llewellyn, WVTM 13. All right. You seen what it uh, what they said the motive was. Falls in line with a lot of stuff that, you know, people was talking about. But the thing that's so supposedly stolen was a gun. And money. Some people said other things, because, you know, when I first did this story, the way the media had it was something was stolen out of her house. Maybe it was stolen out of a house, but now they're saying something, guns and money was stolen out of a purse. I want you to listen in particular, in particular, to how this whole thing seems to have went down according to what they've said in court. She confronted this dude, Pope. Made him strip. Because she didn't believe he had, he was, she thought he, had, he was the one that had money. After that. He got mad after that whole ordeal was over, went and got them, 
chaos ensues. Now, I said earlier in my video, you know, the other video I did, you know, why do all of these people got to jump on this girl? A lot of different things turn a fight against one person against a fight against many. And a lot of it is a lot of people want to get involved. Negative spirits get to moving around. People start getting involved. Somebody don't like what somebody said to them, so off and so forth. But either way, this should have never had happened. But um, look at how big this dude is. Pope, that's a big dude. He's the biggest one of all of them. And she came up and confronted him about a stolen gun and money. Seem fair enough if, if it was stolen from her. But key point, she made him strip. You see how small Mahogany Jackson is compared to him. He's a street folk. You know what I mean? Doing street stuff. I guarantee you when she confronted him, she had something on her that made a grown man strip. Y'all agree or disagree? Because ain't no friend of mine going to come up to me. You stole something. No, I didn't. Take off all your clothes. Strip. I'm going to tell her to get the F out of here. How about you? She had to have something, you know, and she knows he's a man, a big man at that. She had to have something that was convincing for him to bend to her will. After that, word got out. Everybody got riled up. The natives got restless. The manhunt or the woman hunt is on. I'm sure he know who took the stuff if they all hang around each other. Sure he did. But see, this whole ride or die thing, no matter what, then got them caught up. Everything she went through, they need to go through. But we got to be honest. Everybody played a part in this. Everybody played a part. Should it happen to her? No. Should she have been victimized? Hell no. But then again, sometimes, you know, things that you know you'll never recover can be the very thing to leave, make you leave people alone. See, everybody had different avenues of how this thing could have been resolved. I've seen videos of them fighting on separate occasions, different places. She's at their house or one of the people's house going back and forth. If you got to fight with friends, they ain't your friends. Where you physically got to fight as a grown up? No. No, you don't. It's a tragedy what happened to her. It is. And they all need to be held accountable. But I mean, this stuff right here is just crazy. I've never seen so many adults nowadays fighting like teenagers in the street. We'll keep up with the updates. Another thing before I leave out of here, I want you to pay attention. They said it was eight different videos that are out there. Eight different videos, guys. So out of all of that fighting and crazy stuff and dehumanization of this girl, somebody had enough calmness, eagerness, and evil in their heart to push play at least eight times. Whether it's on the same phone or separate phones. They all were of like mind, evil, with evil intent to do that. This was put on a live stream. He said in one of the videos, they say somebody say, put him in the trunk. Supposedly that was Pope's trunk. He drove around. What kind of crap is that? He shot this girl in the back of the head, but she was supposed to be their friend over an argument. An argument of something stolen from hers. That was rightfully her. We'll pick up it when this is more details and Sue. But it's sad all the same. I'm Stock Market Steve for the Dynamic Region Channel. As always, like, comment, share, and subscribe. I'll see you in the next video. Take care.